From the Barbados City Newsroom, this is your evening news update for Tuesday, February 22. Be vigilant. Police caution Barbadians to be on the lookout for persons loitering in their communities. Crime Prevention Officer Inspector Stephen Griffith says incidents of persons loitering with intent to commit crime are on the rise and several persons have either had their homes or cars targeted. He advised Barbadians to secure their property. We have had reports of loitering by persons with criminal intent in several communities across the island. Some persons have had their homes attacked, others have had their vehicles targeted. It is time to examine the existing state of security on your premises and address areas of lapsed security. Check your doors and windows and be sure to have your keys with you when leaving your home. Do not stereotype. Report all incidents of people loitering in your community to the police. Do not leave items in plain sight in your vehicle and avoid leaving the vehicle keys in the ignition or in the door of the vehicle. If you are going to be out of the island, appoint a caretaker and notify the police of the person's contact information. If you wish to pass information to the police, please call 211 or the police hotline at 429-8787. Some of the island striking nurses, led by the Unity Workers Union, are back on the job. UWU General Secretary Caswell Franklin told Barbados today that while the nurses who have been off the job since last December have not had their grievances addressed, they opted to return to work after experiencing financial difficulties from having their pay docked for being off the job. Happy about it, but they got to do it because of their finances and situation. Right? On the other hand, there are some nurses who say that they would rather leave the nursing profession than to continue under these conditions. The Mesta Santos Public Health Laboratory identified 222 new COVID 19 cases from the 1,315 tests conducted on Monday. Of the positive cases, 35 persons were under the age of 18 and 187 were 18 years and older. There were 99 people in isolation facilities and 3,116 in home isolation. The death toll from the virus stands at 311. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of fully vaccinated persons is 148,993 persons, that's 55% of the total population or 65.2% of the eligible population. Local conglomerate Goddard Enterprises Limited has created a time capsule to be on Earth in another 24 years. On Tuesday, officials and family members of the first owners of the original company came together to mark the encasement of a 100th anniversary time capsule at the Goddard Complex on Fontabelle, St. Michael. Group Chairman Charles Herbert is proud of the company's legacy. We have survived 100 years and we're still going strong. And the biggest danger to companies that start as family companies is that they die away when the founding family members retire or die. And really, Goddard's is one of the most unique things with Goddard's is that it successfully transitioned from being a family company, then to being a public company, and as we heard earlier, to a company where actually no family members are members of the executive management of the company. So we have successfully transitioned into a company that can now survive and prosper without any family members. It's not dependent on the people who started it. And I think that's something that not many family companies actually achieve. 33 items were encased in a blue box, which was then carefully placed in a concrete structure on the grounds of the company's Fontabelle complex. Colin Goddard, also a grandson of the founder of the company, was pleased to share in the day's events. This location has not been chosen at random. It has deep meaning for us at Goddard Enterprises. And I'm happy to assist in the placement of the time capsule this morning as we share memories of our 100th anniversary with those who will open it in 2046. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children. 
two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says natural gas will provide the energy needed to assist in rebuilding economies as the world emerges from the COVID-19 pandemic. He made this statement during his address at the sixth summit of the Heads of State and Government of the Gas Exporting Countries Forum in Doha on Tuesday. Dr. Rowley said as a country impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, Trinidad and Tobago can identify with the theme for this year's summit championing natural gas opposed to COVID-19 recovery and sustainable development. Pre-COVID-19, the domestic energy sector based on the government strategies was enjoying a major upturn. The pandemic curtailed this momentum by delaying the implementation of new upstream projects. Prime Minister Rowley said the pandemic affected this momentum by delaying the implementation of new upstream projects. He added, however, that recovery is on track. In the medium to long term, several gas projects are in the appraisal and sanctioning phases. These include deep water projects with estimated gas reserves of 6.6 .6 trillion cubic feet and the Manatee cross-border field, which adjoins the Venezuelan Lauren field. On the international front in the U.S., the three white men convicted of chasing down and murdering a young black man as he was jogging out in their suburban Georgia community were found guilty on Tuesday of committing federal hate crimes and other offenses in the 2020 killing. Thank God for this good morning that Wanda and Marcus have prayed for. It is because of their conviction to get full justice, not partial justice, for their son Ahmaud Arbery. We get to celebrate this moment. What we got today, we would have gotten today if it wasn't for the fight that the family put up on January the 31st. What the DOJ on what the DOJ did today, they was made to do today. Come on. It wasn't because of what they wanted to do. They were made to do their job today. I give all glory to God. And we got justice for them all. We got in the federal and the state. Come on, So all the ones that think like the Mike Michael, you better think. Because I tell you something. Your families are better fight like this family did. I'm telling you. Just a fuck mark. Just a fuck mark. Just a fuck mark. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.